In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make 3D Chrome Grills on Blender, as well as using Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to learn how to make this, just keep watching. So the first thing we want to do is actually go find a 3D model of a person, because that's what we're going to use as our base to put our grills on. So I like to use CG Trader or Sketchfab. And you can use either a man or a woman. I prefer using a woman because I'm a woman. So I just look up female 3D models that are free, of course. And also make sure that they're rigged because sometimes the unrigged ones, you can't really move the mouth or like they won't have teeth. So try to find a rigged one. Like this one is one that I use often. And it also has texture mapping. So you don't have to do any of like the styling for the model either you know you can do that but it is more work and here you see me going on sketchfab and looking up the same thing the next thing i do is import that model onto blender so i go to file import and whatever file, file type it is usually like fbx or glb and i go ahead and import that into blender the model i'm using um it's from Sketchfab. I already had it on my computer. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it's from Sketchfab. If I'm able to attach the direct file um, in the bio, I will, but I'm not sure if I can. In this particular case, the armature was covering the actual model. So I had to go in, so I had to click the armature and then go into the object data properties, which in this case has like a little stick figure it usually doesn't have that icon and i went ahead and changed went to the viewport display and changed the display to stick that way it would not cover the actual model and for this particular render i'm really only going to be showing like the mouth and the chin area so i don't care how everything else looks if i'm keeping keeping it a buck like all i care about is the mouth and the chin um, because these models these 3d models can get a bit tricky with the armature and stuff and things can move around like you saw the eyeball moved around a bit but it doesn't really matter because like i said we're not even going to be showing that part and as you can see i can turn on and off the names that each little string in the armature corresponds to and i can change it from pose to static so i just kept it at pose and now we're actually going to go ahead and pose the mouth and the teeth and all that how we want it to look in our final render so i want to see the teeth so i'm going to have to open the mouth a bit and move it around a little bit to my liking so in order to do that i have to click on the armature and then switch from object mode to pose mode. I also switched over to viewport shading just because that makes everything faster. And now in pose mode, you're just gonna have to find the the line on the armature that corresponds to that part of the body on the model. So as you can see, I moved that line and it moved like the whole top jaw section, which I didn't want to do. So I just press control Z on my keyboard and I went back. So yeah, I finally found the corresponding um, armature line and I started adjusting the mouth how I saw fit. And ultimately, this is the pose that I went to. I wanted something that would show off the grills and that would still look cute, I guess. So once you have the pose that you'd like, just go ahead and save this file. Um because I haven't even saved anything, but save the file. And then I'm just checking to see how it looks like in render previews and stuff. And I haven't added an environment texture, so yeah. So now what you wanna do is actually screenshot this, this exact thing. And you're gonna go ahead and copy and paste that screenshot over to Adobe Illustrator, which is where we're going to do most of the designing for the grills and then we're going to later take it back to blender obviously 
Now we're going to use the pen tool and the curvature tool, either or, um, to create the grills. So for the first two front teeth, I wanted it like to be fully covered, like a cap grill. And I wanted to add a design on top. So I traced the shape of the tooth because it's going to go directly on top of that tooth. And then I added the design of a heart and some stars to that. And even if you just want to add like a cap, like an outline to the tooth as the grill, you still have to go ahead and trace the whole tooth. And then eventually we can fix that on Blender. So I went ahead and did all the designs that I wanted to here on Adobe. You can even add text like, I don't know why I wanted it to be kind of like astrology inspired. So I added the Gemini text to be on the the bottom teeth. And um, I'm not a Gemini, so don't come for me, I'm a Cancer. But I felt like <laughs> if I put Cancer on there, people would think I'm repping the damn disease, which I'm not. So I feel like Gemini is a mutually, objectively known sign, basically. So yeah. And make sure that you go ahead and right click your mouse and create an outline for that text in order for you to see it on Blender. So yeah, I finalized my design and now it's time to export it to Blender. So I just made sure that the text uh, was an outline as i said previously and then i want to file export export as and make sure that you export it as an svg in order to see everything that you've made here on adobe on blender back on blender i went ahead and imported that svg um that we just made on adobe and i highlighted everything and pressed s on my keyboard in order to scale it up and then I pressed RX90 in order to rotate its axis 90 degrees. I also went ahead and set the origin to geometry by right clicking my mouse and setting the origin to geometry. And I proceeded to align the grills shape like size wise as well as position wise to the actual mouth on the. I then went ahead and went to the data object properties panel and I added an extrusion and um, I try to just make it the same width as the tooth. So I just moved it back and you may have to position it like rotate it and stuff because this is 3D. And when we traced these designs on Adobe, it was 2D. So it might not be at the correct angle. So go ahead and fix the angle as well. And I added an extrusion to every object here. Before I added an extrusion to the text, I went ahead and highlighted all the letters and press Control J on my keyboard or right click my mouse and press join. That way they're all just one object and I can add the same material to them, which was my original plan. And you can see from these angles that I adjusted the, the grill caps to be more of a diagonal because that's exactly how the teeth go in this 3d model once everything's aligned and extruded i just adjusted the camera real quick to just set it to the actual frame that i wanted to and you can just click the camera icon and i showed you there if if it's not if you're not able to move the camera icon with your mouse just press n on your keyboard and then go to view and then press camera to view and you'll be able to move it with your mouse. I then want to go ahead and convert all of these objects into meshes and then remesh it as I'm doing to this very first object. Um, I just right click my mouse, convert it to mesh, and then I go to the, to the modifier properties and I remesh it. And that way I can adjust all of these objects in sculpt mode and it will look a thousand times better than it does now because right now it's kind of flat like there is no dimension to it so sculpting it makes it have more dimension it makes the corner smoother it puffs things out you know and make sure you do that to every single object that you have here
We're now ready to sculpt. So we change from object mode to sculpt mode. And the three main tools I use here, or the four main tools actually I use here are the smooth tool, the bulb tool, the inflate tool. And I've actually used a grab tool in this tutorial to, you know, move the, the caps around to make it look more natural. I pretty much did that process to all of the objects, but before I did that, I wanted to add an environment texture by sliding this over and changing this into a shade editor tab. And then I went ahead and changed it from object to world. And I already have this environment texture added, but I'm going to show you how to add it by going to add texture environment texture and then plugging it into that node. And then you can go ahead and add an HDRI of your liking to the environment. I get all of my HDRIs from polyhaven.com and they are free. And now I'm back to working on the girls and I just wanted this to be like a outline cap. So I went to um, fill mode and I pressed none and then I added a depth and that created a outline cap looking situation. So you can do that to any of the, the filled in girls that you want them to just be outline caps. And then I went back to sculpt mode and I worked on the rest of the objects. After that was done, I removed the existing materials, which is like a default black material on the objects. And, and that, that was done on the shade editor tab. And after that, I added a new material by just pressing new. And I went back to the render preview so I could see everything. Everything's like this default white. And this is where the fun part begins. And this is also a reminder for you to save that damn file. So of course I was going for a Chrome vibe. That is my constant vibe that I go for. And these are girls. So, you know, most of the time they're silver or gold. And um, I went ahead and added a, a Chrome texture to most of these objects by pressing the metallic up to one and the roughness down to zero or whatever roughness you would like. And you can also change the color, like I said. And a small tidbit is a lot of the times when you're on sculpt mode, the mesh stretches. So when you add a metallic material, it looks grainy. So you can fix that by just right clicking your mouse and going to smooth or auto smooth and that'll fix that grainy problem. So I pretty much added a material and a color of my liking to every object. And I usually render in in cycles. So I went ahead and changed my engine from EV to cycles and go ahead and turn on your GPU if you have that because it will make everything faster. Everything's usually a lot darker in cycles. So I added a light by going to add light at the top left corner and I adjusted it to my liking on that right panel. You can adjust the, the wattage and the color of the light. And if you want it to be like a sunlight, an area light, a point light, whatever you want. So for this last part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get ombre lips. Um, I feel like it gives it more of a Y2K 90s vibe. So you're gonna go ahead and switch from layout to texture paint. And since this model already has a UV map, you can go ahead and just paint right on top of that UV map. Um, there is a way to do it if the model doesn't have a UV map, but that will be for another tutorial another day. Let me know in the comments if you wanna know how to do that. But yeah, once you're on UV map, um, all you really have to do is get the brush and change the color. I was going for like a dark brown outline and then like a pinkish middle. And go ahead and outline your model's lips with the brown. And then there is a diffuse tool. So you're gonna go back with that diffuse tool and you're gonna diffuse the edges of that, make it look a lot better. And that's basically like the gist of the texture painting. It's literally just painting on top of your model. Just like add a color, diffuse it, add another color, diffuse it. So everything's pretty much blended how it's supposed to be blended. And the last thing I did was like, just conceal the edges. Um, to just give it a cleaner look um, with the same technique, just using the brush and then the diffuser. And by the way, you can change 
the whole damn skin color of your model. So if you want your model to be black, you can use the same technique to change the skin color and basically any feature on the model. And this is basically what it looks like. Um, I just went to the render previews tab just to see what it would look like. And make sure you save your file um, in a little pop-up should, should pop up when you save it to modify your object and you press yes or save um because if you don't you won't be able to see this when you render your model basically and the last and final step is to go ahead and adjust your camera and render your image and you can save it by going to image save as and this concludes the tutorial. So thank you everybody for getting to the end of the tutorial. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you know the next time that I post. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments. This is more of like a intermediate type of tutorial. It's not completely beginner because boy, I was confused when I first did this. Okay. So yeah. Um, bye.